Hello everybody. Today we are going to look into an example where we simulate the mold filling process using uh, VOF. We will further look at the solidification of this molten liquid after it has completed the filling process. The geometry is, as you can see over here, a cast. The geometry, as you can see over here, is a cast. We'll be using the VOF model where we will have air and the molten liquid as two phases. We'll be using the solidification and melting modeling approach. Uh, the liquid will be pushed inside the cast from the bottom at a temperature greater than the melting point of the uh, metal. We have symmetry boundary condition. That's why we are only simulating half of this cast. The cooling of the cast will take place by a wall boundary condition where we will impose a heat transfer coefficient. There are two outlets at the top for the gas to escape as the liquid comes in. And once the liquid levels reaches the top, we will change the heat transfer coefficient so that the solidification process can be accelerated. Let's take a look at the setup process. This is how the mesh looks like. See, we're using a polyhedra mesh. These are the symmetry planes. This is the inlet. And at the top, we have the outlet. So first of all, let's take a look at the mesh metrics. Quality, evaluate mesh quality. And you can see the mesh quality, the orthogonal quality is around 0.23, which is good. And the aspect ratio is within limits. Let's take a look at the material property. We have two material, air and metal. For metal, we'll be using some specified properties. So the density we will specify it as a piecewise linear profile. As soon as you select that, these options will come up. So we will specify four points. You can see as the temperature increases, the density changes. Similarly, we will also change the CP to piecewise linear for points. OK. Similarly, edit the thermal conductivity to piecewise linear. Again, four points. The viscosity of the liquid is 0 0.0143. Pascal second, the pure solvent melting heat is 240000. Okay, the solidus temperature, the solidus temperature is 1080, and the liquidus temperature is 1190 degrees centigrade. The air. <laughs> We'll be using the ideal gas method. We'll use the default values. As a best practice, since air is not going to solidify, we will specify zero value for solidus and zero value for liquidus temperature. We'll now go and activate our solidification melting model. And activate the solidification melting model, specify a mushy zone parameter. I've also activated the multiphase model where volume of fluid has been activated. We'll be using the implicit method. The primary phase is air, the secondary phase is the metal. And under phase interaction, we are going to activate the surface tension. Set it to 0 0.1 Newton per meter. And we are also going to activate the surface tension force modeling with wall addition, which will help us activate the 
contact angle. Double click the inlet, change it from mixture to air. At the inlet, we don't expect any air to come in, so the mass flow rate is zero. For the metal, we have a specified mass flow rate of 0 0.0041, but we can also specify a transient profile, such as you can specify an expression for the inlet profile. If the flow time is below one second, this will be mass flow rate. If the flow time is below 10 seconds, this will be the mass flow rate. And if the flow time is above 10 seconds, then the mass flow rate will be set to zero using this equation. So the mass flow rate now will ramp up as we go from zero seconds to one second. It will stay constant till 10 seconds and it will go down to zero at the end of 10 seconds. For the outlet, we will specify the outlet as if it's open to atmosphere. So the gauge pressure is set to zero for both the outlets. And also the thermal boundary condition is set such that if there is a return flow, it will be at a very high temperature. So let's set the backflow temperature to 1200 degrees centigrade. Go to metal VOF, set the volume fraction to zero so that it's only air coming back in. Similarly for the inlet. Let's set the thermal condition to 1200 degrees centigrade. Let's go to the walls. Let's look at the walls. So these are all the walls. We'll set up wall boundary condition. Well, it's a stationary wall. The metal and air contact angle is 30 degrees. So in ANSYS flow and the contact angle is measured inside the face, which is listed in the left column. So in this case, this is the metal. And so the metal to air is the contact angle inside the metal. And that is 30 degrees. Go to thermal, set the heat flux to zero. That means the walls will be adiabatic at T is equal to zero. Now what we can do is we can set the wall boundary conditions over time uh, and we can keep on changing them as the solution runs. To do that, we'll be using commands. These commands are based on TUI language, and I will show you how to use them to effectively set up your simulation and run the simulation without stopping. Go to calculation activities, activate execute command, double click, create new, and write, all right, define, Boundary condition set wall wall mixture thermal PC yes convection and in one go this should be able to set up the boundary conditions. So we now go to execute commands, set up a new command, paste it, and we set it to activate when the flow timer hits two seconds. So that means my boundary condition will change from adiabatic to convective boundary condition at flow time two seconds. I'll set the boundary condition back to heat flux. In this case, at t is equal to zero. Now I will add one more command. So I set the heat transfer coefficient to 60. It's important to have the spellings correct. Set it okay. So now the heat transfer coefficient will be set to 60 at t is equal to two seconds. We will add a new command. 
where we will set the T infinity, that is the heat will be lost to the environment at a certain temperature, that temperature is to be set. So if I just copy this, paste it over here, go back to wall condition, you should see the free stream temperature change to say 30. I'm going to change it back to heat flux now. Click OK. So now we have the first command is we are activating convective heat transfer coefficient. Second is we are setting a convective heat transfer coefficient. And the third one is we are setting the T infinity. Now as the solution continues, we want to increase the heat transfer coefficient further so that we can accelerate the solidification procedure. Otherwise, it will take a very long time for the solidification to complete. So we are going to set a new command. We'll disable command 2, which sets the heat transfer coefficient to 60. That means the heat transfer coefficient keeps on constant at 60. We are just disabling this command. We are not changing the heat transfer coefficient at this point. So if you test it, you can see command two becomes in it. Finally, we will add command five where no time go all the way up to 10 seconds. And then we will increase the heat thrust coefficient and click OK. So that is how we are going to control the whole process. At different flow time, every command will be executed at the specified flow time. And we don't have to come back and check and stop the simulation or start the simulation. And um, the complete simulation will go through and we will have a full solidification melting profile at the end of it. Now we will go and set up our methods. So we'll go to solution methods and we will activate the uh, wrap phase gradient for polyhedral cell and non iterative time advancement as well. At the same time, we will change the neighborhood correction to three. Once we activate uh, non iterative time advancement, we'll move it to options and activate hybrid meter and we will select the conservative approach and click apply. Now the next step will